From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted ballot. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You know me. <laughs> you know me. I don't like talking about politics on this show. Because I know the dirty little secret. The dirty little secret is that people under 45 don't really like reading the newspaper. They don't really care about politics. They just don't want to know. And women especially don't want to know. Bottom line. So my success in the radio business, lo these 14 years or so that I've had this incredible run, has been based on the fact that unlike my earlier incarnation on an AM radio station in L.A. and before that in Phoenix, before that in Miami, before that in Albany, New York, AM radio stations, talking to the near-dead when I was talking about politics, oh yes, we had good shows and I had fun, but um, my career went into a whole other trajectory. Once I went to FM radio and decided uh, I'm going to talk about the things that people who listen to FM radio care about, and generally they are not politics. Generally, they are not the news. We can pretend it isn't so, and we can try to shove things down people's throats that they don't want. Or we can do what I've done all these years. <laughs> Just pretty much ignore it. Or use it as a way to make fun of chicks. It's worked very well. Now, the only reason I'm bringing up politics in this particular segment of the program is because in the recent Iowa caucuses last week, Barack Obama, look him up, Barack Obama won the Iowa caucuses. And uh, on the strength of that, people are saying that the uh, voters in New Hampshire, in today's New Hampshire primaries, will probably end up voting for Barack Obama. Now, if your local radio station doesn't think enough of our show to run it live, and the results are already known... Now you know our show is not live, and you should contact the local radio station and say, why isn't this show live? It's freaking great. <laughs> why isn't it live? You could call them tomorrow morning and let them know that. But okay, I'm not doing this show for the few stations that run it on tape. I am doing this show for the people who run it live, who believe in what we do and have seen the success and have reaped the benefits of running it live. People say that uh, Obama will probably win New Hampshire. In fact, 
although Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton were running neck and neck a week ago in New Hampshire... When the results of the Iowa caucuses were announced, another poll was taken, and it showed Obama 10 points above Clinton. And they're saying that Barack Obama could win the New Hampshire primary. And this could very well mean that Barack Obama is a serious contender, a possible winner in the Democratic race for the nomination to run for president this fall. And that's um, a pretty big deal. One of the reasons it's a big deal is because countless analysts, I know you don't read any of this stuff, so you have no idea what I'm talking about. That's okay, I read it for you, and I I will impart it to you. A number of people say that the reason Obama won was because he was able to energize, as they said, young people. That many of the people who came to the Iowa caucuses to vote were young people who don't care about politics and who never get involved in the process. Something about Obama made them want to go out and support him. Today... In New Hampshire, so many people were voting in the primaries that various primary districts were running out of ballots. They were frantically trying to print up and distribute more ballots because there could be a record turnout when it's all over. Obviously, if you're listening on tape right now, it is all over. But we don't care about you, okay? You know, where we're just a time filler late at night or whatever. (laughs) We're not going to redo the show so it's so generic that, you know, it never in any way relates to what's going on today. Not going to do it. So Barack Obama is in a good position with the Democratic primary in New Hampshire. And the analysts are saying it's because young people now... For some, there's something about Obama that makes young people care about him and, for a change, want to participate in the process. Now, our audience is much younger than the audience that watches CNN or reads the Washington Post or listens to KFI, God forbid. Our audience is way younger than that. So I imagine the kind of people who listen to our show are the kind of people they're talking about. I'm curious if what these analysts are saying is true, that there's something about Barack Obama that makes somebody say, you know what, I've never voted, I've never cared, i never read the paper, I don't care, but there's something about this guy I want to go out and vote. Because that's what they're saying. And honestly, I'm not sure whether to believe that or not, because I've got... Many years of experience doing a radio program and knowing that people under 45 years old, especially people under 35 years old, simply don't care. Are there exceptions? Like every rule, there are exceptions. I know there's members of the debate team out there. There are young Republicans and young Democrats and blah, blah, blah. But I know that by and large... You know, when faced with watching reality shows or watching CNN, I know what you watch. I know. I'm well aware. So I thought, you know, it's an election year. And they did say that young people in the age group that listens to this show and shows like it are energized by the mere sight of Barack Obama. And I'm curious whether that's true. I mean, I read other analysis in the paper that said that there are black people who are afraid to vote for Barack Obama because of so many disappointments for black people who've run for president. That black people particularly are skeptical when a black guy runs for president. They're saying, this guy will never win. The fix is in. This guy not going to make it. 
So even they are afraid to say they support a guy like Barack Obama. So I promise I'm not going to waste a lot of time on this. And if people show that they are not energized by Barack Obama or politics or the presidential election, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Well, I figure I'm going to take this one opportunity to find out if what they're saying is true. Is it true that young people, merely because of the existence of Barack Obama, are suddenly doing things they would never do before? Like campaigning. Like reading about politics. Like contributing, maybe financially, to a political campaign. Or just simply going out and planning on voting. By the way, the primaries are very different from what they used to be. Uh, a number of the biggest primaries are on the same day in February. They're calling it Super Tuesday. And I think a whole bunch of the biggest primaries are all going to happen at the same time. California, for years, was one of the last primaries. And so by the time we went to vote for uh, who we chose for a nominee for the Republicans or the Democrats... The decision had already been made by the rest of the country, so Californians never participated in big numbers because our opinion obviously was not important because our primary was so late. Now our primary is going to be along with a lot of the other big primaries. All the same day in February. So I'm curious. Is what the analysts are saying true? Barack Obama, a relatively young and blacker than usual candidate for president is 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 actually viable and and he's viable because young people are excited by the, the mere sight of the guy i'm curious if, if that's true dumb, 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 dumb like it 1-800-5800 tom 1-800-5800-866 I just have a problem with you calling women dumb bitches. I don't see where you get off. Well, I only do it when they are dumb bitches. Yeah, but it's just such a derogatory term. You cannot find any other words in your vocabulary just to express how you feel. Oh, yeah. Dumb whores, uh, stupid broads. This is plenty of words in my vocabulary. You're not even working uh, I'm a, Why are you on I'm, the radio? This is I'm over the hill slots. I mean, I'm, I'm like a thesaurus. I got plenty of words. It's the Dumb Like It Show. It's the Tom Like It Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, Barack Obama. They say not only did he win the Iowa caucuses on the Democratic side, they say he could win the New Hampshire primer. A lot of people are saying it's because young people are energized by the mere sight of Barack Obama. Is that true? Chad on the Tom Likas show. Hello? Yep. Hello? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Chad. Yeah, I know. I just Good said God. that. Uh, yes. This is Mr. Mr. Likas. I'm sorry, Mr. Likas. Hey, good topic today. Thank you. Um, I completely agree with, uh, I don't know if it's what you're saying or what you bring up, but uh, there's something absolutely mesmerizing uh, about Barack Obama, uh, 34. And I don't know if it's... Uh, you know, everybody just fits into that same stereotype of old windbags or or uh, or what, but it's completely mistrust. And then you got the broad. I won't even talk about her, but then you just, it's just mistrustful. Everything they say is the same old stuff that we've been hearing for so long. So, you know, it, it, there, there's a freshness to Barack. And, you know, I, I'm in Los Angeles, which is kind of like the, the dog pound of, of breeds when it comes to people. And Barack just kind of seems to be a mutation of, uh, of everybody. Um, but, uh, man, uh, you're on. Yeah, I think that uh, he's absolutely mesmerizing. Of course, a number of people thought Hitler was mesmerizing, too. I don't know if that's enough, is it? Uh, you know, I think at this point in time, it, it can be if we get enough people out there um, to vote. I, to see, vote. I, well, here's what I think. I think George Bush set the bar so low that nobody cares if you're competent anymore. And I, by the way, I don't, Barack Obama may be the most competent person in the world. We don't know what he'll do until he gets in. Uh, but, we're but, we're but after George Bush, con- no one cares about competence. Nobody cares. They, they're so sick of seeing that guy. 
Anything new? Anything different? Please, anything. Well, he's, he's kind of ruined that for the for the guy who's 60 years old enough uh, to think that we have any confidence in anything that they're going to do. Uh, they're in politics for the wrong reasons, it seems, at that point. They just want the golden ticket out and uh, their name to go down in history. So at least that's my point. Um, I appreciate the topic, and I'll take it off the air, ma'am. Thank you, Chad. Appreciate the, I don't know what you're taking off the air. I think I just spoke to you. Was there a question I was supposed to answer after you hung up? I, I didn't quite get that. Diana. On the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, my I don't know if I have a valid opinion because I I am 24. I don't vote. I don't pay attention to that stuff. Right. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I think with the younger crowd, maybe it's that whole Obama girl, and it just you know sparks something in their head to like remember, and it's just something for them to choose. I guess I don't know really. Chicks on politics. That whole video online thing. Yes, the video on MySpace. Maybe that just draws the attention to the younger crowd and gets them to remember. Don't their... they all have videos on MySpace? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if my opinion's valid because I don't pay attention to all that stuff. But I, you know, heard about the video, saw it. There you go. <laughs> there we go. And by the way, you know, candidate uh, Hillary Clinton is counting on women like you to uh, goose step your way to the poll and vote for her. I would never vote for her. And why not? I don't know. She just doesn't seem, I mean, she's still with Bill Clinton and <laughs> just retarded. So. Chicks on politics. Yeah. Because she's still with Bill Clinton. Yeah, well, she seems weak. Why would she be in a relationship like that? You know. But well, I'm, I'm guessing it's a relationship of convenience. Yeah, and then if that's so, I don't want a lady like that running our country. Well, you realize most politicians have something like that going on. Yeah, I don't know. She's. I don't pay attention enough to really have to vote. I guess, unfortunately. And I think we should send a tape of this conversation direct to Hillary Clinton so they can <laughs> they can stop saying they're expecting young women to come out and support Hillary. Forget it. I don't see it happening. Nah. Yeah. Absolutely not. Young women support shopping. Young women support reality shows. Young women support TMZ. I'm just a hardworking girl. I just work a lot, mind my own business, do what I got to do. There we go. Thank you, darling. Appreciate the call. Why is Hillary Clinton going to lose? Because the campaign is built on trying to attract people like that to vote for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> That's why she's going down. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Barack Obama. The analysts say the reason Barack Obama won in Iowa... And is favored now to win in New Hampshire is because young people are energized by his presence in the Democratic campaign. Greg on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Great. Uh, yeah, not so much uh, Barack Obama, but uh, Ron Paul has actually uh, sparked my interest in uh, voting. Oh, I'll bet he has. By the way... Uh, uh, this is the evening I'm going to be collecting my $500 from a moronic listener who thinks he has a chance of winning in New Hampshire. Oh, yeah, well, I, I wouldn't go that far, but uh, his message really rings true, and I just it just sparked me. Never Well, the last election, I didn't get involved soon enough to actually make a difference and pick a candidate, so I didn't like either two. And this election, I actually want to try, and uh, I've been trying to talk to people about it trying to get them to uh, young people especially because they just don't care. They're just so stupid. It's, you know, like your last caller, I mean... Wait, wow. see, instead of worrying about whether young people are stupid, wouldn't it make more sense for people who care about a particular candidate to go after the people who are likely to vote? Yeah, well, that's what I try to do at work is I try the different contractors I talk to. I'll, I'll bring it up to them, but a lot, a lot of people are very, very ignorant, and they just don't care. It's just so people crazy. who don't care about Ron Paul are ignorant? No, no, it's not that. It's just people that don't care about politics in general. I'm just saying my statement and my views are on Ron Paul, and I support him, 
but I just wish people cared and and took look into look into each individual candidate and say, okay, do I support his views? You know, just actually be smart about it. You know, I mean. And then they ask questions like, how does it affect me? It drives me well, the reason I'm asking this question about Barack Obama is because I agree with you that young people don't care. So what is it about Barack Obama that makes young people care? I mean, he's not that young, okay? The guy is in his late 40s. Looks well, pretty know, good for his age, but... Huh? He's uh, somewhat well-spoken. He just seems intelligent. Seems like... I'm not... He doesn't have my sport, but he has, he has other people's, obviously. So. Yes. Yeah. And you know, Ron Paul, it will not even come close. You do know that. Yeah, I know that. And that's why I've been trying to ask people, well, all the other candidates, though, a lot of times they'll say something, but their actions show another something else. So it's Another like, uh, something else. Well, I couldn't think of anything better to say. Ah, and and uh, what is it about Ron Paul that galvanizes you? Just his... Earn it. Earn something. Don't rely on, you know, everyone else. Don't rely on the government to hand you everything. You need the government to take care of you? Come on. We didn't do it, you know. We haven't done it. It's just recently they've been... Uh, Who's been? The, uh, the government. How? No, in the sense of earning things. Like, people don't want to earn things anymore. You know what I mean? In the sense that everyone wants to get handouts from the government. So if everyone feels that way, why would anyone vote for Ron Paul? I uh, lost you on that. Uh, I think it's a very uh, specific and direct question. If what you say is true, that everybody wants a handout, why would they vote for a candidate who's against handouts? Well, I know. I just wish people So he, by to by buy. definition, he could never win. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I know. So, but... Uh, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If Ron Paul believes everybody wants a handout, why would someone vote for a guy who's against handouts? Well, no, it's not that he's against handouts. It's Well, yeah, he is against handouts. Well, you have the right to work, so work. I mean, it's not uh, that no, no, hard. You're not hearing me. Let's, let's use geometric logic, and I know that's probably above your head and the heads of most of the listeners, but let's try geometric logic here, okay? Okay, uh, step one. Does Ron Paul believe most people want a handout? Yes. Step two. Do you believe most people want a handout? Answer is yes. Right. Yes, right? Yes. Okay. So if the answers to number one and number two are yes, could Ron Paul ever win? And no. using geometric logic, the answer is no. If everybody wants handouts and there's a candidate who's against handouts... Who's going to vote for it? Yeah. <laughs> well, people that actually like earning stuff and... But 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 you don't believe it. that's the majority, do you? No. Therefore, he can't win. Yeah. Yeah, that. <laughs> but the foreign policy and stuff like that as well, I mean... But what, what foreign money? policy? Ron Paul is opposed to... Ron Paul is opposed to mean. any foreign policy. Yeah. Well, not he's not opposed to any foreign policy. Yes, he is. Have, well, to have communication, to have trade, and we don't need to be in each individual company, individual country with military forces. Uh huh. We don't need that. Uh, spending how many uh, million, billions, and trillions of dollars? I don't know. I just don't. I don't so let me that. ask you the question that I would not waste my time asking Ron Paul because I wouldn't put somebody with no chance of winning on my show. And uh, we don't have political candidates on here anyway. Uh, what would Ron Paul have done during World War II? Yeah, I'm not sure. He, he quotes... Uh, what do you think he should have done during World War II had he been alive and in charge? Hmm. I'm not waiting sure for the yeah. answer. Yeah, probably... Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Or, uh, not probably He'd right. Contact Adolf probably Hitler, Hitler and say, let's let's trade. Let's do some trading. How about some Wiener Schnitzel? Yeah. That would have solved the problem, but right? At the same time, what about the value of the dollar constantly decreasing? I mean, think about four years ago compared to the euro. Well, the value of the dollar is decreasing because we keep playing games with interest rates. 
And we play games with interest rates because if the, the Federal Reserve did what they really should do, which is to raise interest rates dramatically, everybody would go crazy. They'd say, we can't afford a house. I can't afford my credit card. I can't afford a car loan. And then they would vote out all the guys who are in office today. Yeah. But you'd have a stronger dollar. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right? Well, in in your opinion, then, or I don't know if you can even answer this, but what, what candidate do you feel is your most or your best choice? I personally, I don't think I don't think there's a good choice. I will pick the best of a bad lot. That's what I will do. Oh. And I do happen to believe Barack Obama is an intelligent person and a well-spoken person. But um, you know, I watch this stuff more than the average listener, and I'm not really clear on what exactly he would do besides pull out of Iraq. Yeah, I'm not. I've I've been trying to watch uh, some of the stuff on the different candidates, and I know. For sure that uh, Giuliani's out of the question just based on... Uh... Oh, he's from New York. I have told you that nobody yeah. from New York is going to win. And I said that back with Giuliani and Hillary Clinton were leading in the polls, and I've stuck to it. And you know what? It's exactly how it's going to play out. Uh, this country hates New York and New Yorkers. And being from New York is a sure bet that you will lose. Well, not so much that. For me, it's... Uh, what I'm, just, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about uh, for, for the country. Yeah. Being from New York is a major handicap because America hates New York. Yeah. No. And Rudy Giuliani, of course, being from New York, didn't think Iowa was that important. He didn't even participate in Iowa. Yeah. Well, what's your uh, what's your views as far as on Romney? What? Um, uh, uh, I believe uh, I believe it's perfectly okay to judge somebody by their religion because religion is a chosen lifestyle. And I don't want a Mormon as president. Uh, yeah, makes sense. Period. Okay, well, it's been great talking to you. Appreciate it. I think if a guy's going to have his finger on the button, I think he shouldn't be wearing any consecrated undergarments. You give that some thought. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. My take on your listener base is that they are very subpar in the intelligence IQ department. Oh, and you know, it's, it's, really, it's got to be a problem to have low self-esteem the way you do. You really should not see yourself that way. I mean, uh, I'm sure you're much more intelligent than you give yourself credit for. It's the Tom Likas Show. What at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, they say Barack Obama who won the Iowa Democratic Caucus last week, could also win the New Hampshire primary. And they say it's because young people are energized by Barack Obama. Really? Lisa, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom, how are you? I'm great. Good. Um, like you, I don't really care to have a Mormon in office. But like most Americans, I think that they would want a president who would put his hand over his heart when he says the Pledge of Allegiance. And I don't believe that Barack Obama is going to be doing that anytime soon since he's Muslim. And maybe if the young voters were really informed, like, where where do you think is... I don't think the young voters care about stuff like that, frankly. And, and I'll tell you something else. I would not say the Pledge of Allegiance myself, uh, because I do not, uh, I cannot pledge to, uh, that this is one nation under God. I'm an atheist. I know that you are, and I totally respect that. But at the same time, you're talking about what most Americans, you know, really want in a president. And I think most Americans would want that. I think right now most Americans want somebody who's not George W. Bush. And right now, I think that's their biggest concern. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that. I just wanted to say that to all of your listeners. I thought it was an interesting fact. Oh, by the way, the, 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 Barack Obama is not a Muslim. Don't let his name fool you. No, I I know that. I, I, I'm not fooled by his name, but he does not put his hand 
over his heart when he says the Pledge of Allegiance. Why is that? Uh, possibly because he feels the way I do, that it says one nation under God. And who really cares? You know, what if he's the most competent guy in the world? Who cares if he... I couldn't care less if he says the Pledge of Allegiance. I couldn't care less. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I just wanted to I want a guy who, when he looks at his driver's license, it doesn't say George W. Bush. <laughs> I think we all want that. We're all ready for a change. And I, I really don't wake up in the morning going, oh, my God, I hope we don't elect somebody who won't say the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, my God. Who cares? I I guess you're right. I mean, they're all, it's, it's what you said. It's It's making a choice from a really bad lot overall well yes and i thank you thank you so much bye-bye appreciate the call mm -hmm. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number julie on the tom like is show hello hi tom it's julie i know i just said that <laughs> how's it going i'm out here in portland Oregon. How, how how's the other white meat doing oh uh, the same as ever i see I'll tell you, if people could be a little friendlier out here, and if we had a few more straight guys, it'd be perfect. <laughs> I love you, Tom. I've been listening forever. Really? Yes, and you have helped me in so many ways. Is that so? Yeah, you're awesome. I love you. I love that. Thank you. There it goes. <laughs> she never got to the point about Barack Obama. <laughs> right? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Drew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Yes. John. I'm doing great. Okay, when I called, you had just said that you don't want a Mormon president. And Correct. Just, you said you're an atheist. I'm I curious am. Uh, if you have a preference as to the religious affiliation of a candidate. Well, I, I personally, I wouldn't vote for a Satanist or a Wiccan uh, or a, a Mormon. Uh, and, and frankly, uh, I'm not that excited about born again Christians either. Uh, but I would say that uh, you know there are degrees of things I can tolerate, and uh, I born again Christianity is about the limit to, to what I can tolerate. Right. All right. Well, that answers my question. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, if I could choose an atheist, I would. But uh, an atheist would never win. Would never win. That's why we become talk show hosts. We can't be president. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Jorge on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Jorge? First do time, long time. Doing okay. Cool, cool. I just wanted to, uh, uh, first of all, say I love your show and uh, thank you for putting me on. And uh, I want to respond to this young lady who's uh, having such a problem. Uh, first off, I wanted to... To point out, Barack Obama is, in fact, not a Muslim. Uh, he said that on many occasions. Um, but also, uh, this whole idea of having a problem with not uh, putting your hand over your heart during the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, I think that that's the one thing that uh, we want to get away from a lot of young people uh, as Americans is this, uh, is this ideal that, you know, you have to be a good old-fashioned, homegrown uh, Dixieland American. You know, what we're looking for is somebody who uh, actually cares about issues that young people care about, like Iraq, health care, uh, ending poverty, improving education, things like that. And so in the uh, the ideal of, 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 you know... Well, that's great. So so I because I'm, I'm in the dark and I'm trying to figure this out, tell me exactly what uh, Barack Obama proposes to do about those things. Oh, well, you know, I think that he, uh, he has mentioned that he wants to bring all sides to the table. You know, not just lobbyists, but at the same time, not just the, the the far left. You know, he's willing to bring all sides to the table, but really... really to do what? Uh, to really engage these issues instead of, you know, uh, uh, letting things like... Uh, that. You're telling me what he's going to talk about and who he's going to talk to. That's not what I'm asking you. Okay. What is he going to do? What is he going to do? He's do. Going to bring about, he's going to bring about change. He's going to fix How? the system that's broken. Um, they're all saying they're going to bring about change. What is he going to do? Well, for one thing, he's throwing out a lot of traditional... Like? Uh, well, like uh, letting the letting the people who finance campaigns set his agenda. That's one big thing. Mm. Uh, 
And, and another big deal, I, I think, is that he's, he's, he's bringing together a, a broad coalition of people uh, who have different ideas, not just, uh, you know, uh, you like know, who? Sort of like to the victor gets the spoils. Who are some of these people? Uh, would you, you mean you want me to list off names? Yeah, or? I'd like to know some of the names. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, um, I, you know, if, if if you look at the people who are working as part, I don't have their specific names. <laughs> come on. But I guarantee you're you pulling this out of your ass, Jorge. Come on. No way. If you look at his staff, you can see that it, it, it contains Democrats and Republicans. Really? Who are some of the Republicans who are in the campaign with him? Or would you? I mean, I can go ahead and check on that for you and call you back. Ah, uh, come on. No, there's no Republicans in the Barack Obama campaign. He just mentioned it today on MSNBC. I was watching him this morning. Did he name any of the Republicans? He did, in fact, and I can find that for you. I mean, I don't have the name off the top of my head. Yeah, I'd like to say, by the way, any Republican who announces that they're supporting Barack Obama will probably get bounced from the party. You know that's not true. Well, no, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't think you heard it right. I think what you're hearing is he's expecting to get votes from Democrats and Republicans. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Tom, but I, I, I know for a fact that I heard it. I mean, I'm, I, I don't have the name right off the top of my head, but I do, in fact, know that that's something. But I, I, I think that that sort of... Um, Sort of, you know, sets the tone for it. See, I think, I think, I think everybody just has these, you know. And again, I, I, I happen to like Barack Obama based on the little bit I've seen of him compared to other people. But, 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 but I also believe that people pin their hopes and dreams on a guy like this. And then when you ask anyone specific questions about what he's done or what he would do, nobody can answer that question. No, no, I think, I think that a big part of it. Tom, what we're looking for is somebody who's who's for one thing not going to uh, to 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 be okay with the status quo, and that's such a big deal for young Americans, you know, in the eighteen to say thirty five. But 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 again, I I ask people all the time. All right, it's not going to be with the status quo. In what way? And no one can answer that question. Well, I mean, Tom, if if you're looking for specific. You know, policy specific. Can you give me one example? You can't give me one example. Well, okay, he 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 has an exit strategy for Iraq. That's that's one example. That's not status quo. Well, my God! So John Edwards has, says he's going to do that. Uh, others say they're going to do that. Well, okay, others yeah, on the Democratic ticket. That's that's fine. But I mean, you know, like that's that's one of the big things that I think that that young people are are, are hoping for is an end. To the last, you know, seven years of, uh, you know, Texas Republican-oriented policy, and I think that that's a big deal for us. And, and even though, you know, it, well, why wasn't it a big deal four years ago or three years ago? Well, I mean, three years ago, you know, um, a lot of the voters who are now coming of age, who are in college right now, were sixteen, seventeen. Well, you were, I mean, was, you were, you were voting age. Why didn't you care four correct. years ago? That's correct. Because uh, in that time, because really you were busy like, smoking weed and banging your girlfriend. I mean, why didn't you care? Why didn't I care? Because why do you care now and you didn't care I, then? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now, Tom. Um, since in the last three years, I've been able to travel abroad. And the thing that's opened my eyes so much is is how negatively America's Americans are perceived all over the world. It's embarrassing, Tom. All right. I, uh, now, on that, I'm going to agree with you because I do a lot of traveling myself, okay. and what you say is absolutely true. But do you really believe that's the vast majority of young people? I do. I, I, I so you think? Oh, so the vast majority of young people are traveling abroad? No, 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 no. no. And they okay, are well, seeing well, what well, people well, in well, other well, countries well, think. What do you? What, what, what is? What is your question? I, I, I might have been confused. Oh, uh, that's where I get off the bus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Daniel on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Dad. How's it going? All right, son. I've got less than a minute. All right. Well, um, I just want to say that I don't think I want any of these people voting for who my president's going to be because they're dumb and they don't know what they're talking about. It's a lot of rhetoric, just like we're hearing from all these candidates now. It's just they don't settle down on any one opinion, on any one thing right now, because they're just trying to get the majority of people like this to vote for them in these primaries. All right. Our email address, Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.